Hello and welcome to episode 192 of This Week of Gear Report for the 28th of December, 2023. That means this is going to be the last show of the year. And let's see, having trouble streaming to Rumble, it says. All right, well, um, I think I'm going to ignore that for now and see what happens. But uh, uh, so, so that's one thing we've been working on is trying to get a uh, get the stream set up on different platforms since YouTube has been a little less than friendly lately and uh, has found great sport in nuking gear report channels. So uh, I've had I've been fortunate and got one of them back. I'm not sure how, uh, but uh I don't want to lose any more and, and we want to have extra places to broadcast. So I'll have to figure out why that uh, generic broadcast stream to rumble isn't working at some later point. And um, let's see. So what do we have going on tonight? We're going to go through our, our typical agenda that where we'll talk about uh, recent reviews. Uh, we may touch on some things that will be published soon. And then, um, I think we're going to get started off, though. The only way we could really start off, I, let's be honest here, uh, we haven't played our favorite game of Where in the World is Kevin in quite a while, but since Kevin's here uh, in in voice only this time, uh, where, where in the world is Kevin? What's up, Jeff? Good to talk with you, man. All right. It's been a hell of a month. <laughs> Yeah. I went up to I went up to Michigan, went to GSL's manufacturing facility in Jackson, oh, and then went right. up to and I spent a week up there, did our Christmas party, went through Lansing, and then went over to Grand Rapids, Kalamazoo, St. Joe, South Bend, and then I went to Fort Wayne and recorded with Titman. We recorded with those tracers and my my contact at Titman, he says, Hey Kevin, I got a bunch of tracers. What do you want to do? And I'm like, let's record jingle bells with suppressed weapons and tracers <laughs> at night. Red and green tracers. Okay. And it was so much fun. And you'll see it on Titman's page. It's on GSL's page. And it's on my page as well. That's but awesome. They were Piney Mountain tracers. We had one of the Titman Gatling guns out there. The 22s. <laughs> And we played Jingle Bells with the guns. It was awesome. That that sounds like it would have been uh, fun to put together, but also some, some real work getting everything set up so you get that right. Yes, but the video editing came together for us, and I got it all squared away. So it looks amazing. incredible. Yeah, then well. I picked up and rolled southbound, and I'm currently in Kentucky rolling across the Tennessee border here shortly headed down towards augusta georgia tonight right that's a long drive so, yeah it is and it's through the mountains in the dark oh but my i've what? been i've been slinging some suppressors in indiana today and kentucky well you know those are two states that deserve to have something nice so i think that sounds like the right thing to do yeah it's been 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 an awesome time so that's where I'm at today, 75 southbound. Wow. <laughs> All right. So we're going to assume if we lose you at any point that it's just bad cell phone service and that yeah. you've not departed the roadway unexpectedly or anything like that. We're, we're going we're gonna to stay safe, positive on this program. It's a safe assumption. <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope so. Let's, let's definitely hope so. So let's see. Um, diving into our – all right, I want to click something else here. I'm, I'm arranging items on screen number two to get to, to show some other stuff here shortly. Uh, let's see. We are going to dive into, uh, for this week at Gear Report, the first segment, recent reviews, uh, which – I'm going to add to screen here, and uh, I'm going to request a favor from Kevin. Don't even try to look at the screen. You just worry about driving, okay? So um, on the screen, we have got an article. Let me get rid of recent reviews covering that up. We've got an article from our hunting editor, Caleb. It's the Die Free Company Kung Fu AR Pistol Grip Review. And... Um, I'll tell you, for for those of you who can see 
the the screen who aren't in audio podcast or whatever, um, this is a very striking pistol grip for an AR platform firearm for a couple reasons, not the least of which is it is literally called the Kung Fu AR grip. Uh, I mean, who wouldn't want a Kung Fu grip for one? I mean, that's the obvious. Uh, but then the, the second is it is one of the most vertical AR grips I've ever seen. Um, like I almost feel like I'm looking at 1911 here. It's, it's so vertical. Um, really neat looking polymer grip with a little cutout in the front. Uh, I have not held one of these. Caleb gave it a four out of five, which is fairly high praise. And, um, I worry that, uh, I'm gonna have to get a hold of one of Caleb's guns that has this grip on it see how it feels. I don't think that the vertical nature of it would bother me, but I have an, an incredible aversion to the A2, uh, AR series, A2 pistol grip that has a little bump on the front of it. It absolutely just wrecks the way my hand sits on the grip and it's, it's obnoxiously uncomfortable for me. This is like the anti A2 grip and that instead of a bump there, it has a little, uh, a divot or a detent or, you know, so it, it's a, a hole that you're, you're in the front of it that you're, uh, like, like one of your Gucci clock guys got carried away with the Dremel and, and did way too much of an undercut under the trigger guard. And, uh, I worry, you know, that, that for some people that's going to fall in a good place. It's going to fit good for their hand for other people. It isn't. So, um, I, I worry that when I try it, that, that maybe it won't fit right for me, but it looks interesting. And I certainly like the idea of having uh, different grip angles. This one is a 12 degree grip angle uh, for people to try. And you got to assume that a more severe grip angle is going to work better for some people and uh, and less severe is going to work better for other people. So I like that there are options out there. Um, thank you to Comart for tossing the customer yo, yo, yo with an exclamation point. He is happy about it. So thank you for that. We appreciate you. So this um, this, this review from Caleb, though, it, it's been in the editing queue for a while and I just got to it. Uh, but I am excited to, uh, to find one of these Kung Fu grips and get my hands on it and see how it feels. Cause it's fairly different than anything I've seen. And I think it's interesting that the, the little, uh, app that runs on the gear report website that, uh, makes suggestions has suggested the Riker grip as a follow on article that someone may like. And I think that's interesting because that is one that, I mean, I've, I've told Ron this, who, who came up and invented, uh, he came up with and invented the Riker grip. I, I told him, I was like, man, the first time I saw that, I thought it was the dumbest thing I ever saw. And it was after getting my hands on it, using it a little bit that I realized that it had some real promise. So I, I had similar thoughts about the, the Kung Fu grip. So well, I'm anxious to see how that bears out when I actually get my hands on one. All right. So let me show you something that, uh, so while we have the screen up, I, we've got the resurrection of the gear report maker channel. So you may remember last week we had created a new channel, uh, to put some of the 3d printing, laser engraving, woodworking, metalworking, all of that kind of stuff on its own channel. Uh, so we could kind of target an audience and, and you keep people happy by giving them things they want to see. And so the gear report maker channel, I think it was approaching a week old when, um, maybe a week and a half when the, um, good folks at YouTube decided that they didn't like it and they nuked it. And, um, for whatever reason, when I filed the appeal, I got a denial that said, you know, we, we looked over, we can't reinstate the channel. And then on Christmas day, about two, two Two and a half days after the denial came back, uh, it was on Christmas Day, and I just happened to notice in the stream uh, on YouTube that there were some videos that were marked Gear Report Maker. And I thought, wait a second, how are those up there? You know, uh, that channel got deleted. But sure enough, uh, the channel had been reinstated. So I never got, I never saw a note from YouTube saying, 
Um, why it was taken down or why it was reinstated, I really have no idea. It, it said something about, um, it had a description that was like spam or, you know, aggressively doing something that was not allowed. And as far as I know, that channel never did anything like that, you know, that I, so I never understood why they deleted it. I assumed it was because I had a link in the description that was not supposed to be there. So I went and cleaned all those up as soon as I could. But uh, yeah, I, d I don't understand it, but it's back. So enjoy it while it's there. I've dropped the uh, the URL in the chat if that's something that you want to check out. Um, you can go check that out. I also put the link to the article from Caleb as well, if that's something that anyone finds interesting. So uh, let's see, that is the Gear Report Baker channel. And in other channel news, they were not so kind as to reverse their decision on the Guitar Gear Report channel. Uh, that one did not come back as a Christmas miracle. Uh, it's still down. So if you have any interest in seeing our guitar content, you will find it on rumble.com. And I'm dropping the link in the comments there as well. So you can go check that out. And there are a couple new videos up on a 3D printed guitar. So we will uh, we'll dive in and talk about 3D printing stuff and how that's gone in my initial uh, week and a half. Uh, I guess tomorrow will be two weeks since the 3D printer arrived. Uh, so we, we can talk about, uh, is that correct? Is it two weeks or one? No, it's just two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and we can talk about how that experience has gone and, and some tips I have for anyone who might think that uh, 3D printing could be something fun for them to get into. So uh, let's see. That wraps up the recent reviews segment. We'll get that off the screen again. Uh, reviews will be published soon. I know that we have one coming up on winter getaways that we had a guest author that contributed that one is in the editing queue and uh, it's a shame i actually hoped i would be able to have that ready before the show went live but i needed another two minutes so probably tomorrow that one will get published and um that's the only thing we could commit to right now as far as any written reviews but i do have lots of content on the uh, guitar channel on the maker channel, uh, things that, um, are in the queue and ready to go. So I think with that, I will remind everyone, Kevin asked me right before we went live uh, his PSA on tonight. Cause he thought he saw something about that in a reminder. And for whatever reason, I noticed uh, right after we went live, I saw the reminder on my phone that said PSA, Palmetto State Armory joins live, but it's for January 11th. Why did I get that reminder today? Like at the same time as I got the reminders for this week's show, I have no idea. Um, Google Calendar likes to do that, but it is a reminder in two weeks on January 11th, we'll have the good folks from Palmetto State Armory here to talk about all the things they have going on. Um, I did my best to get them to promise to drop some sort of exclusive new information prior to SHOT Show, because that's going to be uh, two shows out from SHOT Show, two weeks out from SHOT Show. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what we can get them to talk about. We're going to see if we can work our magic on them and get some new information uh, before we head into SHOT Show. All right. So I think at this point, what we're going to do is before TJ stumbles in, then I think we need to cover a couple things. We'll, we'll give the repeal the NFA a little bit of time on screen, as well as Boo ATF, because that should be up there all the time, if we're being honest. Um, but I want to come back to Guitar Mageddon. We're going to do it. I know it frustrates some people, but uh, it also frustrates other people. We don't do it enough. We're going to talk about this guy back here. So let me grab it real quick, and I'll talk you through what we have here. All right, so what we have is a nearly complete guitar, and I'm going to take the screen back. Since Kevin isn't on video anyway while he's driving down the interstate, I am going to 
make myself bigger and take the whole screen. Let's see if I can swing the mic out of the way a little bit here. Okay. So what we have here is a standard guitar neck that I bought off of Amazon. And uh, it was unattached. It didn't have the mounting holes drilled in it. It was actually, you know, pre pretty inexpensive. I think 25, 30 bucks for it, probably. Nice neck, not, not too shabby. Uh, did need a little cleanup on the frets. I had a set of tuners already available that I put on here, and they look really nice. They're locking tuners. Everything looks good here. But in tightening them, this one here broke in the initial tightening. Otherwise, I'd play it for you. That keeps this guitar from being playable right now is this one had an internal gear failure. The new one to replace it should be here tomorrow or Saturday. I'm not sure. But those are the conventional parts of the guitar. So let me show you the exciting part is down here at the bottom. And we've talked before about Chris, who used to do firearms review stuff here at Gear Report. And he has become like our 3D printing guru among the Gear Report proper team. Um, because Komar doesn't talk about it too much. I think he does quite a bit as well. Chris printed this on a Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon 3D printer, and he did the uh, matte orange, a black here in these, uh, let me see, down here. These two sections are a real heavy black, and then this is a hollow section, and then the gray accents. And you'll notice we're missing a switch and two knobs here, as well as the output jack where you plug in this electric guitar. That's because this piece should be here uh, Friday or Saturday, I'm not sure the uh, electronics, the knobs and switch that go in there. Once those show up, I can solder the pickups in and um, hook up the output jack that I already have. And this should be at that and replace the tuners. And then this should be a functioning working electric guitar complete with the, the strap button so you can attach a guitar strap and carry it around just like a regular guitar. This one, the, the center sections were very heavily overprinted so it weighs eight pounds, which is pretty much, you know, seven and a half to eight pounds is what a Fender Stratocaster would weigh. You would think with all of this hollowed out section, it'd be lighter, but these center pieces were grossly overprinted and way heavier than they could be. So this, you can see the screws in here um, that's connecting the orange section to the black section. I have another one. It's very similar to this but it is white and black. And I think that one, oh, I moved it. I thought it was still behind me. That one uh, I think is going to be glued together so we won't have those screw holes. So that'll be a little bit different. So maybe next week you'll get to see that one playing. You may have noticed when we looked at the Guitar Gear Report channel that I've got a, we printed, we 3D printed an electric guitar is um, a video that I just put up there. So I will grab the link to that and share it in the comments. Here we go. <laughs> so um, we, we have some comments from the peanut gallery here as well. Looks like it will attract giant bees. It could, it is a honey honeycomb themed uh, guitar gun snob got the yo 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 wrong, but again, you, the people from Oklahoma, if they hit the it, anything close to the right keys on the keyboard, I consider it a success. A uh, terrible segment, I yeah, I don't know. I, I think Guitar Mageddon is one of our fun segments here. So, we've got a couple. I've yes. actually uh, got a question for you on that honeycomb portion, sure. Is that thing printed with two separate sections or is it one giant piece? This one is printed in, let's see, one, two, it's, it's in five sections. Okay. And then, then the little accent pieces are additional, all the little gray pieces. So let me see here if I can, I had some pictures somewhere. You can see, oh, that's the wrong screen. And I'm not trying to show you this, Kevin, because I know you're driving. So I'd rather I you just shake your head and nod and act like you're looking at it. But um, it's got an upper section, a lower section. And then on the other side, it's an upper and lower in the center uh, that are really thick printed. 
And then up under the the top right horn, that's like a hollow section. So it, it's made in five sections because most consumer grade 3D printers aren't big enough to do an entire guitar body. So by default, when people make these, this is one of the neat things I'm learning about 3D printing. People make all sorts of uh, designs and ideas and they publish them mostly for free. There are some, some places where people sell designs as well, um, like... You could go to um, to our friend that was here last week, uh, Middleton Made, and see some of the designs and things on his website. Where some of the stuff you can download for free, other things you can actually purchase. Um, but but these designs for all sorts of products are available all over the internet for free. And uh, nice. So most of these designs are set up for these consumer grade small bed printers that aren't big enough to print an entire guitar. The printer that I have is actually big enough that it will handle a lot of the different uh, guitar designs as a single piece, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about. That's something that I'm going to dive into next is, um, let's see, I'm trying to find better pictures here that, that'll show. I don't, I don't have any pictures available here to show easily. That, that show them in sections. But but it, my goal when I get this done, uh, I've got this one that's being screwed together, another one that's going to be glued together. That, the final parts for that should show up in the next day or two as well. So both of those guitars should be done, hopefully by the weekend, if all the parts work out. And then I want to try printing one that the entire body prints on the bed in one go as a single piece. And that obviously will all be one color. Um, but, uh, you know, although some printers, Chris is Chris who printed this, he, his printer is not big enough to print the whole thing at, in one piece, but he can print up to four colors at the same time. So each layer can change colors, you know, to any of the four different colors to give a different design that makes it look like it's made in pieces, although it's printed in one piece. Let's see here. We'll get that off the screen for now. All right, so that gets us through recent reviews. What will be published soon? Guitar Mageddon. Uh, we're waiting to see if TJ shows up for TJ's ha happy hour. I wonder if it's not another adult kickball night. So um, let's see. You know, I had enough. I'm going through my list of. Uh, uh, banners I can put on the screen. And I still have one left over from when I did a live unboxing of a guitar from DH Gate. And that reminded me something I wanted to share with people. Uh, if you have thought about ordering anything from the Chinese marketplaces like AliExpress or DH Gate, then some experience I've had there is um, it, it all depends on which seller you pick. I think the platforms themselves are pretty good and they, they seem to take care of people pretty well. But if you pick the wrong merchant, the wrong seller, and they're intent on ripping you off, they will try to wait you out and run you into the ground waiting for you to give up on filing any kind of claim so you can get any kind of money back on anything. So just be prepared. If you choose to buy anything that's worth more than a few bucks or that you care about you know, getting your money's worth on, um, plan on either give it up quickly or committing for the long haul to fight them to get your money back because there's no middle ground. Like there's no easy way. It's not like Amazon where you just click, you know, a couple things and they process your refund and you're done. Like AliExpress, I got some hard drives refunded off AliExpress and it took like three weeks to get them refunded. And it was three weeks of checking stuff every day. And then DH Gate, I've been working for a month and a half and am finally waiting for the company DH Gate to um, to act as a mediator between me and the seller because they're just, they dug in their heels. They sent me the wrong product, uh, completely wrong and have just dug in their heels and are like, Oh, too bad. And like, well, no, you, I, I'm not paying for it, but it's the wrong product. So anyhow, that's a, just a, an aside there for anyone who's thinking about doing any of that kind of thing. So let's see, Kevin, um, uh, you guys have any big plans coming up? I'm trying to think. I don't want to put you on the spot too much about Shot Show, but um, but I did want to no, ask. I'm not, 
I'm for, happy to talk about it. I'm excited. Yeah. For, for a brand, sure. wh where are you at now as a brand in terms of getting everything set for having a booth and displaying and, and talking to people all week at SHOT Show? This will be the first year in the last, you know, 10 years or so that we don't, are not going to have a booth at all. Oh, right. Right. So I'm probably going to go to the show with a, a backpack full of suppressors and uh, half of it full of bourbon and <laughs> just kind of cruising around the show and linking up with people and creating relationships and, you know, connecting with uh, with old ones and stumbling yeah. around the show a little bit. And I'll be very excited. interested after the show to hear how that went, because every year I hear from more and more brands who are like, yeah, it's just not worth it. Uh, but then sometimes like I, I'm thinking of one brand specifically that right before COVID, they skipped a year. They said, we spend all this money um, instead of doing that. We're going to try some other things this year and spend half the money and do twice as much with other people and other events. Um, but then I got an email from them last week that that was like hey be sure to come see us at shot show so they're back <laughs> right. uh, and, but i but for every one that i know that took took some time off from shot and came back for every one of those like this is the only one i can think of that that has come back i can think of five or ten that were like nope it's not worth it and they've never been back like as a as a displayer there's someone with a boot sure well, I feel like SHOT Show overall is worth it, right? Overall, it's worth it, no matter what you're doing. If you're a vendor, if you're, you know, in media, if you're in sales, if, you know, whatever you're doing, I I fully think that the experience itself is worth doing. But um, we're going to see how this how this functions. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. See if it's, if it's worthwhile. We well, can still have some meetups. We can still host some, like, you know, still host some events in that area, but I don't know. You could do, um, I've seen some brands do this and actually a different company I was with, um, uh, before I came to the content creator space, I was in, uh, the affiliate, uh, industry and an agency I was with many years ago, we got a suite at the, um, where were we? We were at Caesars that year. And the, the conference we were at, the Affiliate Summit Conference, was at Caesars. So we got a suite at Caesars, and we stayed there. Um, some of us did. Like me, me and the owner stayed in the suite, and then I think a couple other people were in other rooms. But we used that suite uh, to entertain and had uh, two or three parties over the course of that week there in the suite. Um, and I think maybe we went a little overboard with the parties, but we also used it during the day for meetings. We could have people come up and, you know, we had a little bar, we had some snacks and stuff, and we get a private meetings here in the suite. And uh, that's something that you guys could always do if you needed to have a private space somewhere without having a big commitment of, you know, the time and uh, of trying to have a, a party and get people to show up. Because, uh, you know, every night people have 27 different things they can do at SHOT Show. Um, but you can get people to come up, take a break during the day, probably. Yeah, it'll, uh, it'll definitely be interesting. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll be very interested to hear how it works out for you. Because I would think that a lot of the people that you need to talk to... Um, are are tied up a lot during the day as well and if you if you have to get them to come see you in a booth then you, they're competing with the walk-up traffic if you can go out and strategically visit those people then you're you're going to be in a bit more control of your destiny i think uh in terms exactly. of who you talk to you so yeah that's, that's exactly like that's exactly what i'm thinking you know we'll have a little bit more control of the environment and we won't be tied to the booth right yep. yep um the last couple of years we've been at the supplier showcase up on the fifth floor mm -hmm. and i've talked with a lot of ffls around the country who said i didn't even realize that there were people in that supplier showcase yeah you know what i mean 
And yeah, so, well, why would they go there? You know, they're not, uh, you know, if they're not manufacturing anything, if they're just a retail dealer, then uh, there's so much to see at SHOT Show, especially since they made it larger. It, it makes sense that people wouldn't go check. Like, why would NFFL just go check out Supplier Showcase if they didn't already know there was something to see there, you know? Yeah, the, the vendors that are up there, Right, there are some awesome vendors at the supplier showcase. Yeah, there's credit card processor, like Laura Morgan and Payrock, right? GSL's been up there, obviously. Um, but there's companies that make banners, right? That do yeah. advertising, that do tablecloths and printing. There's companies up there that do like custom packaging and shelving and wall display stuff and. I mean, it's definitely worthwhile check to check out. Yeah, but it's it's only on it's only on Monday and Tuesday. So yeah. if you go up to the fifth floor on Monday and Tuesday and see that showcase, and then go through the rest of the show, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sure. then uh, you can get the full experience of it. Yeah. Oh. G-Webs has got an idea for you. He says, rent a party bus, have people meet you at the smokers area. They jump in your bus and sit down for a while, looking at your gear while you drive around the block, then drop them off and pick up the next one. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how that would work out, but... Uh, I love it. I love G-Webs it. has been to so many shot shows. Um, you know, you can't discount his ideas when he has them. There's probably something there. That's yep. not a bad idea at all. Yeah. I could go in, grab five or six different uh, people I want to talk to, say, hey, follow me. Yeah. <laughs> For yep. that experience yep. of your lifetime. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and get them boosted up while they're on the bus, too. Um, you know, if they're into that. Right. So we can, we can write some POs right there on the bus, too. <laughs> <laughs> you could, yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> So let me show you guys something, some more things for people who have access to the screen and aren't in the just audio podcast. Um, I wonder if anyone can tell what this is. Maybe there are a couple people who are watching live. Do you know what this is? And I've got that one, and this is the same part, just a little bit skeletonized with some lightning cuts on it. And I'm holding it that way. If I held it this way, maybe it would make a bit more sense to people. What is that? So uh, these are two things that I printed. And I have to be careful the kind of things that I show on here. Uh, a lot of the reason I'm not showing you guys a lot of 3D printed stuff is I'm printing mostly things lately that uh, between gar guitar parts and some other stuff that's taken a lot of the print time up on that machine are things that uh, YouTube doesn't like us to talk about. And I don't want to lose the stream, so we're not going to do that. But these don't have firing pins or chambers or anything that would get uh, YouTube upset. So this is a, a forward stop to go on a lower Picatinny rail. And then this may look familiar as an angled foregrip. This came out of the printer a couple hours ago. I actually printed this one angled about like that with a whole bunch of support material up underneath to try to keep this uh, pick rail slot up here clean. Although I've miscalculated on that. So that's got your forward stop on it as well as your angled foregrip there. So these were just some things I was trying to see how they would come out. They actually look really good. So pretty happy with those. And oh, I had a little part here. This is an example of how you can solve some problems with, um, I mean, people probably already come up with solutions to any problems you may have that you can make little parts for. This is to hold, this is a bracket to go on the side of the 3D printer and hold a camera that looks in at the bed so I can monitor print. So a little, a little thing there just to make the 3D printing a little bit easier. Uh, but yeah, between guitar stuff and and printing things that YouTube doesn't want us to talk about, the, the printer has been running probably, I'm going to say 70% of the time. I was, was going to say 70, 75% of the time since it, since it arrived. But 
then I remembered that I was away for two days for Christmas. Oh, let's see. TJ says, had an issue at the new job. Sorry. So I don't think TJ is going to be here. Um, but good news, he getting paid. So that's more than he could say if he was here. So good for him. I, I'm happy that he's off uh, doing well on the new job. So let's see here if I take myself back down. There we go. Um, I think that pretty much exhausts the things we have to talk about this week. I was I was trying to drag it out, wait for TJ to get back for TJ's happy hour. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put that banner up here just so we can say we did it. And you know what? He's not here. He's not going to know any different. So with that, uh, I think we're going to wrap up the last show of 2023. Thank you so much for being here. Kevin, safe travels, man. You got some more miles left ahead of you, so please be careful and be sure you get there safely. You bet. Have a, have a beautiful evening. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone remember that on January 11th, we're going to have Palmetto State Armory right here to talk about things that they may be releasing at SHOT Show at, in late January. Uh, that means we have one show between now and then. I'm not sure. I'm going to see if we can get someone to come on, uh, maybe get a brand to come on and talk about stuff next week. We'll have to see how that works out. But until next time, we'll see you at the rain.